It's 1130, so we will go ahead and get started. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Carol Battle, and I'm the Health and Wellness Manager from the Office of State Human Resources. We're excited to have our first virtual wellness lunch and learn. The topic for today is healthy holiday habits. There's no time like the present for proactively preparing to avoid those holiday pitfalls. Our presenter is Katie Godin. Katie's prepared. Katie has been a registered dietitian for 15 years. Her experience with Lifetime Medical Center has been focused on helping individuals achieve realistic goals along with improving their relationship with food. Katie enjoys cooking, spending time with her family, which includes her husband and two boys, nine and three years old, as well as enjoying this cooler weather. We're thrilled to have Katie with us today for this presentation. Please stay till the end and learn from Katie through a live cooking demo as she shares healthy version of two wonderful holiday dishes. You're sure to learn something new. Welcome, Katie. Thank you, Carol. Hey, everybody. It's nice to uh, be with you guys today. Um, I thought today, you know, we could kind of take a little bit of time starting off with a presentation on some healthy holiday habits. Uh, just kind of put together what I feel are 10 um, common holiday pitfalls um, and that I think are important to remember. So uh, we'll do this kind of brief presentation and then uh, we'll get into the cooking demonstration like Carol said. Um, all right, so let's get started. All right. Okay, so first holiday pitfall, I feel this is a big one. Um, skipping meals and snacks to save up for later. I know that we're, you know, not alone in the way that we think sometimes we might think, okay, we're going to be going to a holiday party or we're going to be going over to a friend's house. So, and there might be food that's a little bit more indulgent, um, a little bit heavier. So we think, okay, let's, let's kind of skip breakfast. Let's just eat uh, like a bird for the, you know, first part of the day, and then we will save it up for later. Um, so the problem with that. And you probably can already imagine, maybe this has happened before. Um, but the problem with that is typically when we save up, we end up overindulging and we feel out of control when we get to those parties. Um, so the best thing that you can do throughout the holiday season, but also just throughout all throughout the year is to eat regular meals and snacks throughout the day. Um, as a rule of thumb, I kind of tell people eating about every four ish hours. Now, the most important thing we can do is listen to our hunger cues. Uh, if you get hungry before that, it's important that you eat. Um, but just, you know, about a, a little rule of thumb, like I said, about every three to four hours. Um, if you're going to go longer than that, it is very wise to have a snack. Um, Something that I know that I always like to encourage people to do, and you can semi see it on the uh, background here, but it's it's our plate method. It's something that um, you know we like to encourage to people to kind of design their plate so that they're having a little bit of protein, um, a little bit of fat, a little bit of carbohydrate, um, half your plate full of fibrous vegetables. This is a great way to. Um, I'm getting some feedback that that the sound is choppy. I'm sorry about that. Um, okay. Um, so, you know, what I would just recommend is to make sure that a you're planning your day with breakfast, lunch, dinner, and then even a couple midday snacks before you get to those to those holiday parties if they're in the evening. Um, so, okay. Let's move on to our second pitfall. Okay, this is a big one. Avoiding certain foods because you view them as bad or unhealthy. So, I am a firm believer that there aren't any bad foods. Okay, so you might talk to other dietitians and they might say something different, but that's something that I truly believe in. I think that we need to allow ourselves to feel satisfaction from food. There's not a food that's off limits. 
um, especially during the holiday season. Um, we have traditional foods that we look forward to eating. Um, I love remaking dishes for the purpose of exploring new ways of eating food. Not to say that the original version of something is bad. I'm not someone that's going to be um, pushing that, but I really feel like, um, you know, when we think this way, it just leads us to overindulgence in the end. And the reason for that is we're spending so much time thinking about why we should avoid a food because it's so bad or it's so wrong that we end up just giving in. And then we go even more over and beyond what we would have done if we just allowed ourselves a portion of that food. Um, so, yes, very important during the holiday season, mostly because there's just more temptations around. Um, what we should think of is having that balanced mindset. Again, like I just talked about, when you sit down to eat, make sure you are including, you know, a protein, a carbohydrate, a fat. So when you're sitting down to um, a holiday meal or you're at a holiday party, let's look at those foods that you, you know, are thinking about eating and that you've been excited to try, but let's also make sure there's some protein on your plate. Let's make sure that um, you're prioritizing those foods that you want to try. Um, sometimes we just get to the party and we think, oh, we just need to eat everything, but maybe there's certain foods you'd rather prioritize and have those um, and start off with. So, so anyway, that's, that's the second pitfall. Let's look at number three. This is what um, we call all or none, or what I, I like to term it, what the heck thinking pattern. Um, I'm sure most of you have been here. I think we all have, you know, when you're kind of feeling like, oh, what the heck? I've already ruined the day. Who cares? I'm just going to go for it. Or um, you're either all in with, you know, I am just eating, you know, cauliflower rice and all the, you know, healthy foods, and we're not eating the regular mashed potatoes. We're not going to be eating um, any of that. So I really feel like if we can just remember over the holiday season, one indulgent food that day does not equal complete failure. If you end up going over to someone's house and eating, um, you know, a piece of pie that maybe they you wouldn't have had because it's, you know, holiday season and maybe they have a pecan pie. I'm just throwing that out. We had that at Thanksgiving, so it's on my mind. Um, just because you had that does not give you permission or for you to have that feeling of, well, I might as well just go ahead and eat anything in sight and just forget about it. The day is ruined. That is not the case. Um, and so I think, you know, these mindsets are what can really be our biggest downfall. Um, so remembering that, okay, I've had a piece of pie. So what's for dinner? Are we going to focus on a little bit more vegetables because we didn't get as many of those at lunch? Have we gotten into movement today? Maybe we could go for, you know, a little bit more of an extended walk where we walk for 30 to 40 minutes instead of 15 to 20, like we might have done. Um, so those are ways to kind of combat that all or none or what the heck thinking pattern. Okay, number four, not getting enough movement. And I think that that's extremely important all year round. Um, but definitely over the holiday season when you might not be prioritizing this because there's so many other things going on. Um, so you might not feel that there's enough time or you might not feel that you have um, the energy. It's daylight savings. There's a lot of different um, barriers that we can come up with. Um, but I love this quote and I wanna read it, but the best movement is the one that feels good to you. Only you know what your body enjoys. I, I feel like people will come and, um, you know, they're in a session and they might, you know, we start talking about physical activity and then all of a sudden they'll say something like, oh, I guess I should just start walking or start running again, or, oh, I guess that means I've got to hit the gym four to five times a week now. That is okay for someone that might enjoy those types of movement and that way of doing it. Um, but there's other means of exercise. Um, sometimes we have to figure out where we're at and start 
there. If we're not in any type of physical activity mindset at the moment, maybe it is literally just getting out and walking for five to 10 minutes. Um, maybe it's, you know, parking further away, taking the stairs, those types of um, things that you've heard time and again, but they really do add up. Um, you know, in general, I like to recommend at least three to four days of movement a week. But start small, you know, that might mean doing some stretching or some yoga moves. Uh, it movement does not have to look a certain way. And so, um, prioritizing that over, you know, this month, uh, when maybe eating looks a little bit differently, um, is really important. Okay. Number 5. So, I don't know if you guys have heard the term food pushers before, um, but. You, you kind of know who I'm talking about when you hear the phrases, oh, come on, just have a little more, um, or you have to eat this. I made this just for you. Um, and sometimes we do, we have this guilt that if we don't have a bite or a slice or seconds or whatever it may be, um, at some of these holiday parties where they've made these special foods that you're hurting someone's feelings. Um, but one of the best things that you can do to your, um, or do for yourself is learning to kind of advocate for what you want instead of what you think they want you to do. Um, so backing down to the food pushers, um, remember there is absolutely nothing wrong with having seconds or a particular dish if that's what you want. Okay. So that's what you're trying to tap into. Is this what I really want? Um, some things that you can do or say to kind of come back, um, politely, of course, because, you know, food pushers are, um, you know, oftentimes very close to us. So we want to, you know, not be rude, but, um, saying things like, I would love to have some, can I take some home with me and I'll have it later? Or thank you so much for making that. I'll have some later when I'm not so stuffed. Um, those are absolutely acceptable things to say. You're still, you know, thank you so much for making this for me. I appreciate the thought. Um, I think that that's uh, kind of a nice, a nice thing to maybe practice, uh, you know, and um, think about this season. Okay, number six. Not prioritizing sleep. I mean, we don't prioritize sleep all year long, but especially during the holiday season when we have so many different things going on, you know, we have extra commitments. We want the kids to, you know, experience all the fun. So we're out and about, especially this year, we're out and about a little bit more, which is really refreshing. Um, so anyway, Making sure that you're prioritizing sleep is so important. And these are just a few examples of why sleep is important. Um, not to mention, which it doesn't actually say on here, but when we do not get enough sleep, the way that we eat and desire foods is directly affected. Um, you know, if we're tired, what does our brain go for? It goes, it goes for quick energy, which is usually in the form of a carbohydrate which is okay. It's okay to eat carbs, but I think we aren't in that balanced mindset when we're tired. We only think about carbs. Um, so if you can try to shoot for at least six and a half hours of sleep every night, um, and I know that there are various barriers for people. I mean, whether it's you've got young children in the house and your sleep is never determined, you're never guaranteed a night's sleep, or um, you know you work odd hours and maybe you're staying up later because of that, or you know I think there's always something that we can do to improve our sleep habits. So start with what you do have control over. Um, so, you know, that might be turning screens off 30 minutes before bed. If you typically look at your phone when you're late, bed, it could be um, journaling or doing some type of um, more zenful activity. Uh, maybe you try out a sound machine or maybe you try adjusting the temperature in your house. Um, there are things that you can do to help with that quality. Okay, numbers in. So, not 
having a game plan. Um, that is such, I think, an important uh, you know, concept. It uh, can be a huge pitfall is if we go into this holiday season without even any, any understanding of you know, what's going to be going on that day. Um, and listen, we don't always need a game plan, but I think sometimes when we feel overwhelmed with a situation, uh, it's best to kind of know what to expect. So holiday parties and gatherings and potlucks and things like that you're doing at work and um, those are all good times to practice this. Um, bring a dish if you're doing something at your house or if, excuse me, if you're not doing something at your own house and you're not hosting, bring a dish that you feel comfortable with. Um, have a game for the for the food pushers. Um, you know, making sure to eat regularly throughout the day. So a lot of the things that I've kind of brought up can kind of go into um, that game plan. Making sure you're staying hydrated. I brought up fluids, but that's extremely important. Um, as far as you know, if you're out at a if you're at a holiday party or if you're at somewhere that has a lot of different food options. Um, taking a tour of the buffet is actually a really good um, idea just because you can kind of see, remember when I kind of mentioned about prioritizing what food do you want to try? That's a way for you to kind of mentally prepare and say, okay, I see that all these things are here. What are my top three or four things that I really want to try and how can I make it balanced as well, but also get in some of the foods that I, that I really um, think look great and look fun to try. Um, and remember, you can always go back for more if you feel up for it. I think if you have that as a mindset, it's just a good way to go into it versus thinking, I better load up now because I'm not going to be able to have any more later. Um, sometimes just how we talk to ourselves can be really helpful as a game plan. Um, another thing, a lot of times when we're at a holiday party or we're, you know, at a potluck or something like that, um, if you're, you're standing, you know, we might be standing and talking and as much as you can, if you have control and you have a, a place to sit and the ability to sit, sit down. Um, there's a lot of research that shows that sitting down versus standing, we eat differently and try to make sure your food's on a plate um, versus uh, even a napkin, uh, you know, but not just eating and kind of picking, which maybe we're not doing as much of that right now anyway with um, the pandemic. So, okay, let's get into number eight. I know alcoholic beverages, they're so fun this time of year. I get it. There's fun cocktails. You want to have festive drinks. Um, there's nothing wrong with having an alcoholic beverage. You just need to recognize how it can affect your food choices. Um, try alternating an alcoholic beverage with a glass of water or seltzer. Um, there are so many fun mocktail recipes out there that, that give you that fun taste that you might really, you know, be going for without the alcohol in it. Um, and go ahead and set a limit in your head before you get to the party or event. You know, remember that oftentimes alcohol does trigger our desire to overindulge and it reduces our inhibitions. So just kind of having that talk with yourself, if you know you're going to a party where alcohol is going to be served, um, having these, um, you know, a game plan for, for those beverages. This is one of my favorite things to talk about with people personally. Um, stress management is huge. It's something that directly affects how we eat. Um, holidays can trigger stress due to the pressure we put on ourselves and the amount of things we have during, you know, planned during this time. Um, coping mechanisms are important to work through. A lot of times we use food as our coping mechanism and that is okay. Sometimes that just is okay. And I'm not telling anyone that they can't ever emotionally eat. That is something we just can't take away. But if we have other things to add to the table other than using food as our only source of dealing with stress, that's what I like to encourage for people is um, what can we add to the table? Can we add journaling? Can we try meditation, yoga? Can we, you know, try talking to a friend? Have you thought about therapy? And that's something that you feel you just not pull the trigger on, but you feel that could be very beneficial. I'm a huge advocate for that as well. Um, 
not listening to music, taking up a more bath. You know, there are ways that we can have self care. Um, and I think that's really important throughout the entire year. All right, last pitfall um, is being too hard on yourself. Be kind to yourself. You're doing the best you can. I feel like that's one of the mantras that I say to try to say to myself all the time, and it's really hard to listen to. Remember, like I just said, we all emotionally eat over the holidays. Emotional eating is a part of being human. You are not a failure if you decide to have a dessert, even if you are already stuffed. Um, the best thing you can do, show yourself some compassion. Guilt isn't going to help. Um, and remember that you are not defined by how well you restricted a desire of food or didn't. Okay. In the end, though, I know that we want to feel that we have tools in our toolbox to help us work through some of these emotional eating pitfalls that can, you know, be, be hard, hard on us. So um, paying attention to your hunger and fullness cues is really important. This takes time. This is something that I also like to work on with people, but I also have to, you know, explain that this is not a, um, you know, a diet. This is not something that you just give someone and say, okay, go do this for, you know, two or three weeks and you'll be good. This is a mindset. You work on it slowly, but surely. And um, another mantra uh, to kind of say to yourself when you're faced with temptations over the holidays is I can always have more later when I'm not so full. I think I've said that a few times throughout this presentation and I feel that it is really important for our mindset. Um, what might happen is that you don't end up having it anymore. But because you told yourself you could, it's amazing how giving yourself, allowing permission can actually be good in the end. You recognize, wow, I was, I'm allowed to have more, so I stop, but I actually don't feel like having it anymore. So, so anyway, um, I know that was quick. I'm trying to get through these so that I can get to this cooking demonstration. Um, I'll take questions at the end. I know I see a lot popping up through the chats during my cooking demo. Um, there will be some times where I'm just sauteing and doing some things so we can kind of talk through some of these questions um, then. Um, so as far as, whoops, I wanted to show you guys this cooking demonstration little page first. Um, so today I'm going to be making a paleo apple crisp and a green bean casserole salad. Um, the apple crisp, which I'll make second, is one of the most absolute favorite things I have had dessert-wise. I absolutely love it. And it's super simple, and I can't wait to show it to you. The green bean casserole salad I just made for Thanksgiving, um, not because green bean casserole is bad. I'm not saying that. Like I said before, I really enjoy trying new things. Um, I love the recipe websites, which I'll talk about when I get to the cooking demo. Um, so let me, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen here so that we can see. And throughout the demo, guys, I'm gonna, you know, I wish I was, you know, on a cooking show really like Paula Dean, but I'm not. So I've got, you know, kind of my, um, my little setup here, so I'll kind of just, you know, angle and show you guys things uh, as we go. Um, all right, so first, I am going to start with the green bean casserole salad, which is from Eating Well. It's my one of my absolute favorite websites to go to. Um, it gives a great breakdown of macronutrients, calories, nutri um, micronutrients, and things like that. All of the recipes that I have tried have been fairly simple and absolutely delicious. So, um, so that's one that I, I usually like to, to talk about. Um, okay. So the first thing that I have here and that I'm going to do is I'm going to cook some shallots. So I love shallots. They are of course, uh, you know, part of the onion family. They're sweet. They have a sweet flavor. Um, they are, you know, a little bit more delicate than, you know, a, a, standard onion, but they can be used as a substitute for any onion dish, but we're basically going to make our own fried onion toppings. 
Okay. So first, I'm going to just heat up a couple tablespoons of olive oil in the pan. Okay. All right, guys. So we're going to do that. And then um, I've got two shallots cut up in here pretty finely that I'm going to dump in there. And so basically what you're going to want to do with these shallots is saute those, um, you know, until they're golden brown. Uh, and we're going to, you know, pick them up, put them on um, uh, the plate with a slotted spoon and they'll be used for later as a nice, yummy, crunchy topping. All right, guys. So what I might try to do is move my cutting board here. Give me one second. That I can get a little bit closer. All right. All right. So, as I'm sauteing those, I am going to saute up or not saute. I'm just going to toast some breadcrumbs. All right. So, I have, I, I use sourdough for, um, for Thanksgiving, but I couldn't find any sourdough when I went to the grocery store a couple of days ago. And so I found this nice whole grain loaf, which looks just as good. And so I'm gonna go ahead and saute that in this other pan over here, just to kind of save on some time. Okay. All right, so we're gonna get that started now. This takes, a little bit of time. So if someone has some questions um, and someone wants to speak them through, I can I can talk to some people while I'm doing this. That's perfect, Katie. Um, okay. One of the first questions was, do you recommend a good mock cake? Oh, I saw that. You know what? Um, I don't know any off the top of my head, like a go-to. I'm not a cocktail person, which is, you know, I know that's kind of the thing over over the holiday season. I'm pretty much a red wine girl. Um, but what I can maybe do is, um, and I don't know, you know, because throughout the presentation, there might be some things that I, you know, don't know 100% every single answer to. Um, so is there a way that I could maybe shoot over some, I bet Eating Well has some uh, mocktails, honestly, that website that I just talked to you guys about, eatingwell.com. Um, I, I want to say that I've seen some there before, but um, that's kind of a place that I would I would start. But I can do a little research um, through some of my favorite websites. I also love Skinny Taste, which is a website that we use, uh, we recommend a lot. And so um, they might have some mocktail recipes on there as well. Okay, great. We yeah. can um, send that at those websites out when we yeah. send the presentation. I think you know, seltzer and cranberry juice and lots of fresh lime. And um, there's so many herbs that you can kind of throw in drinks these days. So there's lots of different options, um, but I just can't, I don't have one that I would just 100% say you should do this. Um, Katie, what are your thoughts about intermittent fasting? That was so, a question as well. <clears throat> yeah. Um, if you want me to be honest. I'm not, not the biggest fan. Okay. And the reason is because I'm a firm believer in tapping into our natural hunger and fullness cues. And I don't believe that we can do that naturally when we're trying to alter um, the times in which we eat. Now, some people might do things like intermittent fasting temporarily. And you know what? Anytime someone wants to work on something, I want them, you know, to know that they have the um the ability to do so just because uh, it might not be something that a diet, you know, the dietitian, you know, if it's something that you really want to learn more about, because there are some health benefits to intermittent fasting. There have been a lot of things that have shown, especially for blood sugar control and things of that nature. Um, but I think anything that you end up doing, whether it's intermittent fasting, ketogenic diet, 
any of these, these diets, I think the most important thing that we can all do for ourselves is learn some of these really important strategies on, um, you know, these behaviors. I think as long as we're also working on that with someone, it can, anything can kind of fit and um, you may decide that you're able to, you know, kind of eat healthy in the way you want without having to do intermittent fasting and eating foods, you know, breakfast in the morning. And so um, I think it's just about the education part of things. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. um, one other question is, can you use vegetable broth instead of oil for sauteing? Sure. But okay. I love olive oil. So technically we should we should have about well, if you're looking at the Mediterranean diet, which is heavy olive oil, there's four tablespoons a day. Isn't that crazy? Um, but I love olive oil, but yes, you definitely can. If you're just wanting to kind of save up and not use as much, you know, but you I think that that is perfectly fine. Okay, good. All right, uh, that's all the questions for now. Um, okay, all so right. We'll, we'll, I'm sure we'll have more opportunity. Oh yes, that is fine. So what I'm doing now, because it does take a little bit of time, is you know doing the shallots, um, toasting these bread crumbs. After I do the shallots, um, I'll kind of put them on this paper towel with a slotted spoon just to let them kind of let the oil kind of drip off, um, and then. I'm going to cook the mushrooms. So, um, so this is asking for cremini mushrooms, which baby bell is cremini. Okay. So you might not see the word cremini in the store, but baby bell is what you're looking for, which is, you know, everywhere. Um, so I'll cook those next, which I'm almost done here with these onions. We just want to get them nice and brown. So I'm kind of. Getting you down into that angle there. And these are so good. I know that they might not be as good as those French fried, French's fried onions, but listen, these are so tasty and it does take a little bit of time. Um, but so, you know what? And I'll kind of go through some alt, um, alternatives to some of the things in this recipe. Uh, you know, you might find that you're not an onion person, so maybe you just leave these off. Um, or maybe you just love those French's fried onions, and maybe you just use those for the topping. I mean, it's okay. All right, so what I'm going to do is, where's my spoon? I'm going to put, I'm just going to kind of get these onions and put them on my, Hey, Katie, we did have a question. Someone asked um, yeah. if you could briefly uh, speak about sugar, which is better to use natural and artificial options, but it's confusing to know which are better for you to use. Sure. So as far as sugar goes, um, there are so many different things that you can try. With this particular um, apple crisp uh, recipe that I'm making, what's wonderful about it is it's, so delicious and sweet, naturally from those honey crisp apples that I'm going to use. Um, and it uses maple syrup, only about a quarter cup in the entire recipe, um, which I love to use things like honey, um, maple syrup. I find that anytime you can use those replacements, I think that why not? You know, they're um, it, the processed forms of sugar can be, you know, it, it can be something that we want to work through using less of. Um, coconut sugar is another really good option as well. Um, it has a lower glycemic index, which means that the, the blood sugar response or the way that your blood sugars respond to the sugar is a little less. Um, so sometimes people, you know, kind of experiment with coconut sugar. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of um, alternative uh, sweeteners. You know, and so, um, but things like stevia, 
um, if you're going to, you know, sweeten a beverage, like if you really want to make some sweet tea, um, something like that, I think that that's fine. I think it's also about how much we're using of stuff like this. You know, I just have people kind of look through um, and kind of analyze, you know, how often am I using something with an artificial sweetener? Is it literally everything I drink has to be artificially sweetened? Or, you know, am I, so those are the types of things that we just working on reducing some of this versus um, completely cutting out, avoiding altogether is sometimes a better place to start. All right, guys, so I'm just cooking up these mushrooms right now. These breadcrumbs are kind of getting toasty over here. What are your thoughts about using avocado oil? Avocado um, oil? Oil, yes. Oh, I love it. It's great for high heat cooking, which olive oil technically is not, which is what I'm using kind of more of a medium heat. But um, avocado oil is fantastic. So I think uh, it has a flavor to it and sometimes you like it and sometimes you don't. So I think it just kind of depends sometimes on that. Um, I'm gonna be using coconut oil today in my apple crisp. So I'll talk a little bit about coconut oil when I get to that. Um, but which is also another high heat cooking oil, which is good to have on hand because, you know, different oils are used for different reasons. You know, sometimes we wanna use a high heat cooking. Um, sometimes we wanna roast. You know, so avocado oil is great for roasting because you're cooking at a very high temperature oven. And that's a, um, I think, a, you know, an important thing to remember is that olive oil and some of these um, lower uh, heat um, oils uh, can oxidize and actually not be as healthy for you when you're bringing them up to really extremely high temperatures. Okay. So I am just going to dunk these mushrooms. So I just sauteed the mushrooms after the shallots and I'm gonna put them back into a bowl. Something about this recipe that maybe could be a little tedious is um, you kind of have to do a, a few separate steps, but all in all, it comes together pretty easily. All right, so we're gonna set those mushrooms to the side and then we are going to add the green beans here. All right, so, um, doo -doo 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 -doo. so green beans, about a pound of trimmed and chopped green beans, okay? Um, I actually use, I'm gonna take these first. Right. So I actually used um, a bag of green beans, you know, like that you would stick in the microwave, you know, poke a fork, stick in the microwave and cook them that way um, because they're just easy. It was just easy. And so I did that. And then um, I used about one and a half bags of those. So, all right. And so you're gonna add a little bit of water here. And then, Okay, so then we're going to cover this and that's going to cook for about five ish minutes. So it's going to, the green beans are going to cook. So, so far, what I've done is I have, um, let's see, I've done the onions, I have done the mushrooms and the breadcrumbs, and now I'm cooking the green beans. So, one thing, um, someone just said something about my cookware. Thank you. It was a gift from my husband last year, I think. So it's fun to have fun cookware, I will say. But those are the only two things that I don't spend a lot of money on anything. It's just these two really nice pans. <laughs> um, okay, so we're gonna make the sauce, which is the best part of this recipe. And one thing I wanted to throw out there is if you just wanted to make this sauce and mix it into your green beans, it's just a new way of having a fun pizzazz to green beans. Okay, so um, when you look at all this stuff and you're like, whoa, this looks like a lot of steps. Um, maybe we just kind of fall back on green beans and this bunch of sauce. All right. So, um, let's see, let me get 
the ingredients here. Okay, so for the sauce, we're going to be using. Sorry, I'm just reaching behind me here. I have um, a tablespoon of Dijon mustard. And then in this bowl right here, I have a tablespoon of fresh thyme. Now you could use a uh, dried thyme, just less. I remember when I was just getting started with cooking and I had no clue. This was maybe in college. I don't remember. Um, I had no clue about, you know, it's not a one to one ratio here. So I used an like a tablespoon of, of, of a dried herb for the tablespoon of fresh. Ooh, yeah. So just a teaspoon if you use. The dry, right? So we've got the Dijon mustard, one of my favorite things ever. Garlic. So we have three um, cloves of garlic. So three cloves of garlic in here. More is better. If you love garlic, add another clove. Um, garlic is super, super powerful as far as it's it's in the shallot family, it's in the onion family. Um, that very potent aroma, that smell that's kind of just, you know, you, it, you know, it's garlic when you smell it. Um, it actually enhances benefits for it to sit out for a little bit after it's been crushed. I didn't realize that. I was kind of reading a little about that. I thought that was interesting. Um, and it's a onions and garlic are really good at what you call prebiotics. So prebiotics feed your um, good healthy gut flora. So you probably always hear that word probiotic, right? So you hear, take a probiotic supplement. You know, prebiotics are actually, in my opinion, um, one of the things that don't get talked about enough. So, because you need that good food for that healthy gut, um, healthy gut bacteria. So anyway, we're gonna use a little garlic. I have a little bit of white wine vinegar that I'm gonna dump into this bowl. And then I have a little bit of salt. All right. So those four ingredients, mustard, vinegar, garlic, thyme, salt is actually five. So five ingredients. And we're just going to stir it up. I love this little whisk. I no clue where I got it. My three-year-old loves to play with it. Um, but it's so perfect for little sauces. I, I, I can't remember where I got this. All right. So we have that and let's see. So we're cooking those for maybe another, so I don't forget. I'm just gonna set a timer here for a couple of minutes. Um, so yeah, like I said, with the sauce, you could really just use that delicious sauce um, and put that into those steamed green beans. And that would be a really delicious, uh, way to kind of jazz up those, um, those green beans. Okay. So what we're doing, we're waiting on that. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I can. Oh, yes. So the next thing that we're going to be using in this recipe, which maybe is the most unique part of the recipe is some chard. Um, I don't know if you guys use have used chard before. If you like chard, it's just 1 of those kind of earthy greens. Um, it, it's. In my opinion, it is um, not as bitter as kale, not as coarse as kale. It is um, not as soft as spinach. So it's kind of in the middle. Um, and it's great. It's great sauteed. It provides some boldness to this dish, and which I really appreciated. Um, again, you can leave that out. You don't have to use it. It's just a way to enhance that nutritional profile, which um, is going to be, you know, a lot of vitamin A, vitamin C. Um, so I think those are, you know, some, you know, especially vitamin C right now is a good thing to kind of be thinking about. Um, so let me check on these green beans. I think I saw someone ask what the pants were on um, the brand is caraway. All right, so the beans, they're cooking. Some people like their beans not super soft. I mean, it just depends on what you like. So I kind of like mine a little on the softer side, so I might let them cook a little bit longer. Um, and then we'll kind of add everything together. Um, okay. So 
The next thing we're going to do is add the sauce to these green beans. All right. I don't want to run out of time. So I'm going to just start kind of adding things together and it can still kind of cook for a little bit. All right. So. What I'm going to do now with these green beans that are in the pan is I'm going to add this. Fragrant sauce, so you're just when you're, you know, in the presence of it, you just kind of immediately smell that thyme and that garlic. And it's amazing. It's just amazing. It's so, so good. It, it really smells like fall, you know, it just smells like a nice, yummy fall rich flavor. Okay, now we are going to kind of cut the heat off. All right, we are going to stir in the chard. So I'm going to show you guys four cups. Okay, so we have four cups of chard. Again, leave it out. Don't put as much. Put in a cup if you need to kind of, um, if you're wanting to branch out and try something different, but you're a little nervous, then yeah, just don't don't do as much at first. Um, okay. So we're going to add that in and then it just kind of wilts naturally. You could throw this in with your eggs to the chart in with your eggs in the morning. You can obviously throw it into soups. Um, okay, I'm just make sure you guys can see that. So all we're doing now, all I'm doing now is just mixing in that chard so that it naturally wilts with the green beans and the sauce. And then we are going to add in the mushrooms, the fungi, all right, um, also another fun thing about mushrooms, um, if you're not vegetarian, but you've been thinking, hey, I want to just reduce my meat consumption, um, mushrooms are a great filler. So pasta sauces, hamburgers, whatever, mix mushrooms in with that. Um, pasta sauce might seem like an obvious, but burgers is kind of fun. You take half the meat that you would normally do and mix it in mushrooms. It bulks it up. Any vegetable, actually. Um, it's a great way to add vegetables to, um, to your meat. Okay, so we've got the mushrooms all mixed in, the charred wilting. It's looking really good. See it okay? Okay. So then we're going to mix in these breadcrumbs. I just think that that looks so pretty. Let me show you guys. I just think it's really, I just think it's really cool. All right. Um, so guys, that is it. I'm going to pop it into this dish to kind of show you what it would look like completed. Try not to make a mess. All right, so we have got our green beans. I'm going to top it with these beautiful French fried homemade shallots. All right, guys. Voila. So that is the green bean casserole salad. Okay. I'm going to try to quickly switch gears. The apple pie does not, or the apple crisp does not take long at all. Um, so let me move some things around. Bear with me. All right. All right, guys, apple crisp time.
sorry. All right, I am about ready. Okay, so I've got the oven preheated. For I know a tasting. Oh, I know. I just saw that pop up. Yes. That's the only downfall of virtual. Although, guys, I see that there are 251 uh, people on here, and I don't know that I'd be this confident in a uh, person, but um, I have loved doing virtual stuff in that way, but I miss that. That part is such a fun part. Um, so maybe one day, right? Okay. So anyway, it's preheating to 350. I've got my food processor out processor um, out. So first we're gonna make the topping, all right, which is literally amazing. All right. And super duper duper healthy. I'm not kidding. I would say that this is dietitian approved eat for breakfast. I I mean a hundred percent. Okay. So maybe without the vanilla ice cream. I, you know, I don't know. So all right, let's do. First, we're going to do some chopped walnuts and pecans. So that, and this is gluten-free, guys. Okay. Um, I don't eat gluten-free just because I just like this recipe a lot, and I loved that it used a ton of nuts for its actual um, mealy topping. Um, it just tastes really good, and the nuts is a huge bonus. So you're getting lots of healthy fats and omega threes, and um, keeping you full longer. There's a lot of good benefits from those nuts. Um, um, coconut. I saw someone say, "What about a coconut allergy?" Yeah, I would just leave the anything coconut out. You could replace it with a different oil. You could just leave the shredded coconut out. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna pop these nuts in my little baby food processor. Okay, we're going to add a third a cup of shredded coconut, which is unsweetened. So, right, so a third a cup of unsweetened coconut. We are then going to add um, a half a cup of almond flour. So almond flour is a gluten-free option. Um, it's great for anyone that's, you know, maybe trying to watch their blood sugars. It's um, lowering carbohydrates. So that's another positive of using almond flour. Um, all right. So we're gonna pop that almond flour in there. Then we've got the coconut oil, which is a quarter cup of coconut oil. Unrefined is what I recommend just because it's being um, less chemically um, altered. Um, it actually has that delicious coconut flavor to it, which is what I love. If you don't like coconut, like I said, just use it. You could use a different oil. Um, what? Oil would you recommend if they didn't like coconut oil? I guess you could use like a canola oil or something like that. Okay. I don't think it's the biggest deal. Yeah. And same, would you be able to use regular flour in this if someone wanted to? I think you could. I okay. think I don't know if the ratio is the same. That I I don't know a hundred percent. But I'm okay, sure. Okay, and we had a question about using applesauce. Instead of oil, <clears throat> instead of oil, you could, yeah, you could. And again, I don't know the exact ratio. I'm sorry. <clears throat> okay, so we've got the the coconut oil, we've got the almond flour, we've got. Ooh, now we need all the good stuff. We need three tablespoons of maple syrup. Like I said, this entire recipe. Um. So okay, guys, just to recap, I have nuts, almond flour, coconut oil. Okay. Now, three tablespoons of maple syrup. The real deal, no, no sugar-free maple syrup. Okay, guys? It's it's allowed, all right? All right, so three tablespoons. And then we're gonna do a teaspoon of some vanilla extract. Which it's crazy how expensive this is, right? I mean, and you run out so fast. I, I don't know if that bothers anyone else, but I feel like I run through it and I'm like, oh God, it's so expensive. Um, okay, we're gonna need two teaspoons of ground cinnamon. Okay. 
love cinnamon. Super duper healthy. Also good for blood sugar control. If there's anyone that has diabetes, this is a great thing to eat on top of oatmeal, on top of stuff like, you know, anytime you do cinnamon. Okay. Then we're going to do a quarter top, um, a quarter teaspoon of ground nutmeg. Delicious. And then um, a quarter teaspoon of salt. Right, guys, so you've just got all that. Where's the top one? <clears throat> all right, so I have it all in my food processor. And I'm going to process it up. So pardon the noise. You might have to take the lid off and I kind of like brush it around a little bit, you know, just to make sure it's all even. I think I need a bigger um, food processor for Christmas, maybe. I don't know. Things getting pretty small. Okay, so I'm just going to pulp that maybe one more time. The coconut oil, they tell, tell you to break it up a little bit before you put it in, but I still find that it needs a little bit of help. Okay, one more time. And then we're really almost done. That's the most difficult part of this process is making that topping. Um, okay, so I'm going to keep these two things. Move this out of the way for a second. All right. So now what we're going to do is the apples, which is super easy and so delicious. Um, where are my apples? There they are. Okay. So I used Honeycrisp. I just don't think there's another apple to use. I can't. I love Honeycrisp apples. So you could leave the peel on if you want to add more fiber. That's totally fine. If you're like, oh, I don't know about that. Take it off. Not a big deal. Um, I left my, I took mine off. Um, let's see. I used three really large ones. I went to the, you know, the grocery store and it's insane how big these apples are. I mean, yeah, remember guys, a serving of an apple is maybe like the size of a tennis ball, not the size of like a softball. So these were huge. So I'm, instead of five, like the recipe says, I used three. All right, so I'm going to tilt this down a little bit. Okay, so we're gonna pour apples, just chopped up apples into the pan. And then we need a little bit more of the cinnamon nutmeg stuff. So we're gonna do um, a teaspoon of um, cinnamon. One second. So, okay. So I'm just gonna kind of sprinkle a teaspoon over the apples. And then we're going to do a half a teaspoon of the vanilla extract. All right, and then we're going to do just a pinch of some ground nutmeg. This is kind of how I, how I do my pinch like that. And then we're going to do, um, do, 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 do one and a half tablespoons of almond flour. So we're going to use that again. Hmm. All right. Let me get out my stuff. All right. So we got one tablespoon and then about half that. All right. Then what else? A tablespoon of maple syrup. So you're kind of using very similar ingredients that you did in that filling, or excuse me, in that crust. And as we know with baking, you know, you have to have like 5,000 ingredients out, but I promise you it's worth it. It is so good. It is so good. Um, okay, and then we're going to do a quarter cup of water. This is really to help the apples if you feel like they're dry. I feel like these honey crisps are super moist, but I don't feel like I need more than a quarter cup. All right? So then you just kind of mix that all together. See that? So I'm just kind of mixing 
these apples just to kind of coat it. Boom. And then the best part, this delicious, yummy filling. That liquid was water. I just saw that question pop up. Um, okay, guys. So what I like to do is just kind of press it on. You have to use your fingers, use your fingers. They're clean. And you just kind of dollop the, the topping on there. I'll show it to you at the end. We don't have time, you know, to fully cook it, obviously. I am going to end up using my fingers a little bit, guys, but they're clean. Okay, so just to kind of, you know, even it out. Oh, it's so good. Okay, so really, though, if you were to eat this for breakfast, right? Because everyone's probably like, oh, my gosh, I get to eat this for breakfast. What you could do about a ninth. Um, of the recipe is about 250 calories. Okay, so you take like a half a cup of it or so, and then you put, so this is what it ends up looking like before it goes into the oven. Guys, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be completely honest. I know we're one minute out of time, but this is really kind of funny. Um, I had one made for you, which is sitting over there, but I'm really embarrassed because <laughs> When I first started the cooking presentation, right before, you know, you guys got on, I had it set to 350 and I was like, you know what? I'm just going to stick this in for like maybe five minutes just to heat up. And I've literally just took it out because I forgot about it. So the entire thing is burned. I'm so embarrassed. It's not a good picture. It, it looks seriously guys. Like if it's cooked, it looks pretty much like this, except it's maybe a little bit, um, you know, darker, but. Mine is literally burnt. <laughs> so that is okay. great, Katie. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna just show you. Makes us realize you are real. <laughs> Y'all, oh my I goodness, am real. I am a real <laughs> person. I'm a real person. So, okay. Anyway, but you could top it with some vanilla Greek yogurt. Maybe that's a nice swap for that vanilla ice cream. Um, I know that we ran out. I am so guilty of thinking my presentation is going to be like 10, oh, 10 or 15 minutes. And then it lasts almost 30 and I'm like, oh gosh. Um, and then I want to do two recipes typically, and I probably should have just done one, but it was so much fun. Um, questions. I think you guys are going to get the recipes if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Um, and I just wanted to mention just kind of, you know, here at the end, I know that, um, you know, this time of year, sometimes people try to stay away from seeing a dietitian or they do like, I just need to avoid it. And I'll wait until January. That's another pitfall guys waiting until the new year. I really think it's important that if you feel there's something you, you know, want to work on, go ahead and tackle it. You guys get unlimited dietitian visits through telehealth. So, um, just something to consider. That is wonderful, Katie. Thank you so much. And we will yeah. definitely be sending out your presentation and a, we recorded today's video. So we can Great. send that out as well and contact information. And it's so nice to know that you can do telehealth as well, I because this is it. statewide. So yeah. those who don't have a lifestyle medical nearby can still use you all. So that is wonderful. For sure, for sure. Telehealth is great. And, um, but yes, I appreciate you guys having me today. It's fun to do these cooking demos, especially in my own kitchen. You feel so comfortable and things like that. So I guess a little bit of a perk from the virtual side of things these days, but yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're welcome. Any other questions or just anything? I know we're, we're a little, we're a little past time, but if there's any other questions that anyone kind of can think of that you want us to kind of email, I'll be in touch with you guys about the mocktail recipes, but if there's anything else, just reach out and let me know. Okay, great. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Happy holidays.